Hello, this is Sam from the Downloader Podcast. Uh, I'm standing alone in my hobby room chatting to myself. The reason for this is because I'm experimenting with some visual content for the Downloader Podcast uh, via our YouTube channel, uh, one I've just recently created. And I thought for a little bit of an experimental first recording, I might uh, have a look at some of the uh, DAC, North African Germans that is, that I've recently been modelling and painting. And I talked through some of the steps I went through to achieve that sort of uh, deserty look. So I shall uh, show you what I've been doing and I'll talk through the steps. Here we are. This is a small selection of some of my DAC infantry. Uh, my Deutsche Afrika Corps army, uh, infantry-wise, is based primarily on the Artisan Designs DAC range, which I just think are the greatest miniatures. I, I've got lots and lots of Artisan stuff for my Americans and my Russians. Uh, and my SAS, which are in the works, and my partisans as well. I really like the character of these figures. They are chunky, they are strong, and they come in one piece, so you don't have to scrape uh, extensively all the individual parts, you don't have to glue them together. I really, really like these figures. Um, so, yeah, that's the uh, the primary uh, source of my infantry. Um, this is not the whole collection, but uh, I've, I've Got out of the box a few bits of armour that I've done recently as well. I've got the uh, SIG 33 Bison here on the left, which is a Blitzkrieg miniature vehicle, but it's got a Perry crew. I find the Perry crew are very slim, very slender models, but actually as vehicle crew they don't look too chunky uh, beside the artisan figures. Uh, in the centre is a Warlord Games, um, the Panzerjäger 1, a game with... Um, uh, a crew inside. I think that's the Warlord crew that actually came with it. I think I may have done a head swap in there, but yeah, that's my Panzerjäger. And then on the end, that's a Perry Miniatures um, uh, 250 um, slash 11 half track, I believe, with the Panzerbusch. I think I custom built that Panzerbusch. I definitely did um, from bits and bobs of other things, but that is uh, Perry crew as well inside there. Uh, so yeah, those are a few bits and bobs. Oh, and yeah, here on the end is a Warlord Games. Um, uh, BMW with uh, machine gun on it. I think this is actually a Blitzkrieg era um, one. It's marketed under that under that bracket rather than the the DAC range. But I did some head swaps and painted it up in that style, and it, it looks exactly the same. So yeah, pretty pleased with that. So how did I go about um, painting these figures uh, from the get go? Well, I've had misadventures with vehicles in the past, so I always make sure that I soak the vehicles in a good uh, solution of either you know sort of common washing up liquid. Uh, I've been using a fairy power spray um, or a slip bang power spray or something like that, spraying it down, scrubbing it with a toothbrush. Um, and then leaving them to soak for a good half an hour uh, and then to dry before priming um, as I know that at least one of these companies, I think probably Blitzkrieg are the main culprits, use a good amount of uh, mould release agent to preserve the life of their moulds, which I don't blame them for, but it's actually very, very hard to get off. Um, Warlord I haven't found to be as bad actually for that. I think it's the Blitzkrieg ones that you tend to have to soak a lot more. Uh, so cleaning them up in that uh, in that sense uh, is uh, takes takes an hour or so of preparation. Uh, these are what the infantry start out like. I base my infantry on two pence pieces because I'm in the UK and clearly that's a cheap option. Uh, I use the modern ones, um, uh, shiny two pieces because they are magnetic. Um, there's no direct use for this immediately, but I'm planning on using uh, some magnetic. Um, uh, strips in the bottom of very useful boxes like this so that I can pop my minis down and they won't rattle around in those. Uh, usually to tournaments if I'm just taking one army I take them in this uh, battle foam case. This is a, um, a sword bag I believe it's called. Maybe it's, maybe it's called the shield. Oh no, yeah, it's the sword bag which is very good. It's got several layers in it like this, four or five different layers. It's got bigger ones that you can put vehicles in and so on. Uh, but it's a little bit fiddly grabbing them in, you know, in between games, grabbing all the figures out and sorting them into squads. I thought it would be very useful to have uh, them laid out on magnetic strips. So yeah, after I've done this, uh, I don't bother putting on any sand on the base because I'm going to do that later on. But I clean them up, try and get rid of any mould lines that may be uh, knocking around. Artisan normally aren't too bad for that. They're pretty, pretty quick to get going. Uh, and I do uh, a base coat with this. For my DAC, I've been using, uh, this is the Bolt Action Colour Primer, I'm guessing it's from Army Painter. 
or uh, I've, you know, I've used their colours as well. Something like uh, British Uniform Brown I found to be pretty good as a starting point for these, these figures. Uh, and that gives them a nice base um, to work up from. And then what I've done is use uh, another acrylic spray. I've used a, a slightly lighter shade. This one is called Desert Yellow and it actually does come up much more like a traditional Dunkel Gelb than this label is showing. Uh, and then if, uh, depending on which figures I'm doing at the time, I have also used a lighter um, desert yellow shade on there. Uh, this one being a Tamiya for plastics, but it goes on fine over the top of um, other sprays. And I would get progressively lighter with the coats, um, sort of spraying from a further distance and uh, holding down the nozzle for a shorter length of time, obviously. Um, and that, I have found gives you a nice sort of layered textured finish before you even actually get into adding any details with the brush. Um, the nature of the Africa Corps uh, infantry uniforms is very varied. I think the, the tropical uniforms that they began um, desert action in in 41 was actually a, a sort of olive colour um, but they quickly faded. Uh, certainly units that had been there for a year or more in the desert, their, their unicorn, uniforms, not their unicorns, their uniforms could be all sorts of colours um, ranging from light browns to um, even yellows. I know that uh, many Italian uniforms were actually pilfered as things got more desperate on the uh, uh, in the desert um, so that they were they were acquiring all sorts of uniforms so mix and match is what I've gone for with my uh, DAC I like the variety so we've got some with very light shirts dark trousers that kind of thing we've got some um, opposite way around we've got some who are much more olivey overall this guy clearly has acquired some uh, Italian britches at some point um, and yeah, I, I think I think that adds a nice overall feel to your army, um, you know, variety in the way that they look. Uh, so yeah, after I've done that, I use a lot of Games Workshop products. I uh, have them kicking around from years. Most of my paint collection has been here for at least 15 years, uh, in, so I'm, I'm ready for certain shades to be refreshed, replenished. I find this one is good for that uniform, um, still Legion Drab, uh, you know, for various bits for the shirts. Uh, and so on. Italian looking pinched clothes. I like these. This is a Zamizi Desert or the old desert yellow. Um, Zandri Dust is a nice highlight over the top of that and I actually use Zandri Dust uh, for the uh, edging of the bases as well to get a nice or sort of consistent look across the bases. Uh, so yeah, that is a very good one, very useful one, Zandri Dust. Um, the guns, the woodwork on the guns, I use this. I use some Mornfang Brown, uh, highlighted up um, with, uh, you know, a sort of white, you know, a white or a very pale bone colour added into that in progressive stages to highlight it up. I don't have a dedicated highlight colour that I use with that. The flesh tones, the skin, I alternate between these um, two workshop ones, Citadel Paints, Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh, as in I either use all of that on one guy or I go for all of that on one guy because people do have different skin tones, maybe some have been out in the sun a little longer, a little bit more um, sunburned, paler, newer recruits, that kind of thing. So those are the tones I use for them. Uh, and yeah, virtually all of mine are, are, are workshop ones, the odd, the odd tam Tamiya, um, the odd uh, Vallejo thrown into there. So yeah, after I've done that, I tend to give them a magical coat. Of this. this is very much uh, the best friend of uh, very, very many wargamers in my experience. It's a really, really good wash from Games Workshop. Uh, it's called Aggress Earthshade, as you can clearly see, and it covers a multitude of sins. I find it excellent. After I've done all of those base coats, all of those are applied. I liberally uh, soak with this and let it dry and it achieves a wonderful look. I really like that sort of comic book uh, darkened feel that it gives and uh, so then once that's dry I go over with all of those shades again um, mixing up the odd highlight and dropping those in. Um, you know, you judge it yourself. Sometimes you go over with a coat of earth shade and it looks great. You know, you be, need minimal um, highlights, I've found. Sometimes, you, you know, you've got to do a little bit more work on the highlighting. Uh, I'm trying to think of the ones I did recently. This is probably one of the last ones I've done. I spent a little bit more time on uh, getting the eyes, you know, shaded there and getting the tones on the face just uh, just nice. But yeah, I was pretty happy with him. So yeah, um, I tend to use that uh, quite a lot on the infantry. For the vehicles, however, I don't use washes. I've been using... This stuff, 
which is uh, Humbrol weathering powder. So I get a, a big cardboard box, sort of cut in half hard cardboard box to contain all of the mess. I drop the vehicle into it and I brush this stuff all over it. This is when the, the base coats are done on the vehicle as well, when the tracks are painted and the um, other details, the stowage and the um, tyres and rubber and those kinds of things. And it uh, it does sort of two jobs, this, this Humbrol weathering powder. It gets into the nooks and crannies and gets them all nice and dirty and it sort of piles up and gets nice and thick and lumpy. But equally, it sort of drags across the raised areas in a way that a wash doesn't. Um, and it makes them look really dirty and, and used, um, which is a really, really nice effect. And I, you know, I, I think my, my weathering, I think, as a lot of people's, is often a little bit heavy handed, you know, vehicles ending up a lot more weathered than they probably would have ended up on the battlefield. But it makes a dramatic looking figure, doesn't it? So, yeah, I'm a really big fan of that weathering powder. Um, and then when that's on, I use the other magic tool. Um, Two magic tools I put on decals like this. Warlord do a good range of DAC ones. They have uh, a sheet that looks like this, which has all sorts of interesting... Uh, it's got your, your DAC symbol, but it's also got the divisional markings up here. These ones being the 21st Panzer Division, uh, which I've gone for on some of my vehicles, not on any that you can see here. I've put it on some of my Panzers. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I uh, get those slapped on. But in between those two layers, between the... Um, between the weathering powders because you want them sort of fixed in before you put, start putting your decals on. Uh, I use this magical stuff which was recommended to me by quite a few different people. This is Tester's Dull Coat, uh, which is quite hard to get in the UK. Uh, a company called Great Escape, Great Escape Games do it and it's worth its weight in gold. It's really, really good. It um, dulls everything down. It actually makes your miniatures look better when you put a shiny gloss um, uh, varnish over the top of things or even a, a lot of varnishes that say matte varnish they don't they come out glossy and shiny and you lose some of the lovely detail it, it sort of reflects and you don't get a, a true quality of what you've actually uh, what you've actually painted um so yeah combination of different things but as soon as i've got that layer of um uh, weathering powders on and sealed with a dull coat then I go over the vehicles again with small areas of a sort of blackish brown little chipped areas on the armor like this uh, and then a little bit of another wash dripping down from them to make it look as though the you know the elements have really started to wear away um, and, and cause some rust and corrosion there that's the wash that I tend to use that's a Reitland flesh shade uh, another step in the process that I uh, forgot to mention earlier in my haste is uh, a little bit of icing on the cake actually it's a bit of a cheat but it's uh, I find it's really effective after you've been over your model uh, and done all the base layers you've applied your wash and you have um, sealed it with some dull coat or another uh, varnish that you might have a really nice way to get a good light overall highlight and pick out all of the little raised areas is I found this stuff it's the Tamiya weathering master kit which I think is probably more designed for vehicles but I found it really really nice to apply to infantry as well so it's like a little makeup box uh, and you've got three sort of sandy tones there they do other ones with sort of rust colors and more muddy effects but this one I found really really nice for the deserty tones of my DAC um, this little uh, nice sort of uh, sexy little uh, makeup brush you dab it in, get a nice little light covering on there, not too thick. And yeah, once it's been sealed, you dust the whole thing again and it picks out all of the little raised areas. It goes on really nicely on the uh, desert -y tones of the uniforms, but it also works really nicely on the skin actually, on those sort of flesh tones. It just raises them up and makes them look nice. Uh, and, and layered. Um, it even it works well on the browns on the on the gun. I have found it's quite oily. It's a, it is really like makeup. I, I I think not that I'm ever so experienced with putting makeup on. Uh, and it, it it sits there. You don't want it too clumpy. Um, but yeah, once you've got a nice dusting of that, you spray over again with your dull coat and it will seal it all in. The dull coat tends to remove some of it. So sometimes one or two little very light coats are necessary for you to really see those little highlights um, but I think that's a nice um, sneaky way to, to get extra little bits of highlight after you've done your highlighting with your base coats going up.
Um, and yeah, this stuff, I think it was about £6.99, something like that. So not dirt cheap, but, but pretty useful. And also the sand uh, element I've used quite a lot on my vehicles, just getting big clumps of that and sticking them in the tracks and dusting them over the top of the vehicles themselves. And it looks like just little areas of sand. The muddy area, again, good for, for tracks. The, uh, the uh, one on the right there. Yeah, so I really, really rate this Tamiya Weathering Master stuff uh, as a, just a little final final touch to uh, get them looking really nice and uh, textured. As far as the infantry go, uh, the finishing step after I've done the highlighting on there is doing the bases. Uh, and uh, I use several components for this. I have got my faithful tub of sandy, gritty stuff. Now, this is a combination of... Um, Big bag of sand from a builder's yard, which cost about six pounds, something like that, more than I could ever use. Um, but um, our recommendation from Dave uh, was to use budgie grit. I didn't really know what that was um, at first, but if you look very closely, you can see all of those little jagged, blacky, browny, um, and even white uh, little shards. They are, uh, from what I understand, they're like little shells. They're tiny little fragments of shell that have been ground up to give to budgies. I don't know what the budgies do with them. Do they eat it? Do they sort of bathe in it? Do they sharpen their claws on it? I don't know. Um, but a big sort of three litre tub of budgie grit with a couple of quid from one of the pet shops, you know, with pets at home or whatever they're called. Um, uh, pet land or something and I mixed them in uh, together and I've got a really nice combination there that I Use when I'm doing the bases So I paint the base over with PVA and dip them in here And then I go over with another coat of dull coat to seal it all in and as you can see it's not chipping away It's not uh, Fragmenting and I don't need to paint the bases the effect that's achieved between those two elements between the sand and the grit colours them up really, really nicely. Uh, and now what I've done as well uh, with my deck is I've added um, grass, little tufts. Uh, I've gone for two different kinds of tufts on mine to add a, an extra bit of variation. I've used, um, this is some of the, the stuff that's been out for several years. This is, uh, you know, your standard strips of um, sort of static grass that's been glued together and they're in very sort of varied uh, little clumps. Some of them are very small and feathery, some are quite large and chunky. Um, but these I've only found recently. This is Gamer's Grass. I don't know how long these have been out, but these are much more robust. The, the clumps that Gamer's Grass come in are much more usable. As you can see, they are very um, tidy, thick set clumps and you can stick those on without even gluing. If you're not quite sure whether you've decided you want to use them on your mini is you peel them off like this. Sorry about that. Uh, you peel them off and you can stick them straight on. There we go. You can have one on his head. There, and they stick pretty well. So you can uh, you can see what they look like before you're ready to glue them in. Uh, and I've used a combination of both of those, and they I feel uh, look pretty good. Um, obviously, a sort of north. North African look, a Tunisian sort of semi-Mediterranean sort of feel, but I quite I quite like that. It adds some variation to the sandy tones. So yeah, between uh, varied uh, spray coats, lots of old Games Workshop paints, some weathering powders, uh, some nice minis, some gaming grass. Um, that's how I've achieved the look for my Deutsche Afrika core. All right, thanks for watching.